This is The Driver, sponsored by Bristol Street Motors. Recorded at Goodwood Festival of Speed, hosted by Kirsty Gallagher. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, guys. How are you? Hello. Very happy. Well, thank you. Yeah, good. Sorry I was late. That's okay. No, it's quite, it's quite okay. You're allowed to be. Navigate right? around the perimeter of Goodwood. Um, we're going to get started, if that's all right. Of course. Welcome to the Driver Podcast with me, Kirsty Gallagher. Uh, I'm here at the world famous, amazing Goodwood Festival of Speed, sat with the Bristol Street Motors XLR8. I love that. <laughs> Drivers, you know and love very much. We've got Tom, we've got Nick, we've got two Toms, Nick and Ronan. All good? Very good, actually. Very good. I mean, the Festival of Speed, you cannot love this place, apart from obviously the traffic getting in and out and the great sunshine that we're obviously clearly having. Uh, but this place is like nothing else. It's just such a buzz to come to every single year. If you're a car fan, if you're a motorsport fan, you can't help but love this thing. It's incredible, isn't it? When you drive up, I mean, I've been a couple of couple of times, but the, the campers and the... I mean, it really is quite serious. I mean, if you love cars and whatever, you, you, you might as well just come out for the weekend and enjoy it. Of course, and the, you know, the amount of people, you know, we've got loads of you here. Hello, everyone, if, you, if, you, if you're joining us down here. The amount of people that you speak to who are all camping out the weekend, who are here on Joe's, they come down, they spend from Thursday to Sunday. It's just a great event to come to. Nick's camping. I'm, I'm camping, are yeah. You? I'm literally right next to the gate, which is lovely. I'm just, <laughs> just wandering. Have you got, what, what are you camping in? Big, big American RV. Have you? Oh my yeah, gosh! Yeah, it, it has to be done. Are the family here? Uh, the Not girlfriend. just you on your own, is it, Nick? No, just girlfriend. Oh, lovely. I was probing. I was can we can we call that camping if it's in a big RV? Uh, that seems like that's glamping, isn't it? I think that's very it much is. glamping. Have you done this before? The the glamping thing. Not 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 here, but it's the same RV we take to the. You know, a lot of the drivers take RVs to the race circuits as well. So. And it's actually, I, I've been trying to see if Jensen Buttons on Twitter this weekend because I'm actually in Jensen's old RV. So it's like, Jensen, oh, really? do you want, yeah, say, <laughs> Jensen, do you want to come, come and, you know, invite you back to your old, lovely, plush RV? We'll find out. It's got his own post We'll message him. Sorry, Ronan. His RV's got his own postcode, just to let you know. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. It's it house on wheels. Ronan, actually, I was just going to come to you. Um, you're very young, new, you're the next big thing. What about, what about this? you know, Goodwood, the Festival of Speed. I mean, ha ha have you been here many times or were you brought up doing this? Is this how you got your bug, your driving bug? Yes, yeah, so I've never actually been to Goodwood until this year, which is really, really cool. Wow. Uh, yesterday was my first day here and uh, these guys said to me, oh no, this is quiet. You know, the scale of the event is, is incredible. Huge. Yeah, just trying to get in. You know, I'm parked about three miles that way over the other side of a golf course. That's when you realize we're at Goodwood Festival of Speed. It's one of the biggest motorsport shows in the world. It's incredible. And you know, as much as we are all professional race drivers, four of the 20 touring car drivers, um, we're all still motorsport fans. So yeah. we're in our element here. Yeah, it really is brilliant, isn't it? I mean, it, it's a uh, shame about the weather, but who cares? Um, memories and Tom, I mean, you've, you've frequented this place a few times, haven't you? Well, Tom Ingram's been saying that I'm a veteran of the championship, which makes Is me feel very old at 38 years oh, old. But um, Don't yeah. start. Don't start on that. I love this place. I've been very fortunate to drive all sorts of fantastic vehicles up the hill from old rally cars. You know, I drove the uh, Ford Escort uh, Mark II London to Mexico winning rally car up the hill, <laughs> which I thought was going to be really quick. I did turn one and turn two completely full throttle because it had no horsepower left in it because when it's done 15,000 kilometers flat out it hasn't got much horsepower left in it and it's on <laughs> such soft springs it's got so much traction so I couldn't even drift it sadly I've driven old of my sort of dream cars growing up uh, the old Super Tourers uh, Honda Accords up the hill my obviously old touring cars up the hill and and actually Jensen Button's old Honda NSX road car up the hill I was to take Lady Alexandra as a passenger seat up in once, and I thought I'd give it the full beans up the hill, took all the grass up the inside, don't tell your dad I'm doing this, and like <laughs> wheel spinning everywhere. I, I went to town, I absolutely really? loved it. And at the end of it, they said, well, Thomas, this was actually gonna be Jensen's road car, but I'm not oh. sure with those brakes and tires left, we're gonna be able to give it to him. So, uh, but it's, it's just a great event. I'm a massive petrol head. Um, I should be staying the night here like you're in an RV, so I can go and sniff exhaust pipes in the evening. Um, after a few sherbets, <laughs> but uh, 
Uh, the, the cars are wonderful things. They're, they're, they're breathing, living things, I think. I think every car has its own little heartbeat. Yeah. Um, a bit like Knight Rider, you know. Oh, um, wonderful. Or Herbie, you know, the little VW. I like Herbie Goes Bananas. <laughs> Herbie Goes Bananas. Is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Knight Rider, yeah. I mean, I that's wanna... my, absolutely my era. I mean, I'm older than all of them. Nick and, well, okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Shut up, Kirsty. Um, did you, though, from a driving family, you know, family of, of petrol heads, as you say, did you come here as a child? I'm interested in that kind of, how you start your love of, of cars driving. This surely was a bit of a trigger, was it, for you? Do you know what? Here? Yeah, it's funny you say that. I was, was the very, trigger? I was very, Catalyst. very... You know, a Catalyst was my father watching every Formula One race. Uh, I, I wasn't allowed to do anything other than watch Formula One on a Sunday. And then I got the bug for it. And I was racing Ford Escort Mark IIs from eight years old around a field. But I was very fortunate um, to go up the hill here mm. when I was younger in one of my, my father's car, which was a Ferrari F50. And um, dad was like, let's see how much wheel spin we can get off the line. And yeah. we were just wheel spinning all the way to turn one. And I was really young at the time. And I remember thinking, isn't this the coolest event in the world? And we're up there with all these incredible racing drivers with, you know, they've won Le Mans 24 hours like five times before. And... It was like these superstars in my head. I was up there with them. Yeah. Never thought when I was older, I was going to be, you know, obviously British and world independent yeah. champion and, and, and living the dream. And, and I very much am. And I'm very, very fortunate to have this as my job. Yeah. I think most men grow up going, I want to be a footballer, an astronaut <laughs> or a racing driver. Yeah. And I've ticked that yeah. box. Um, <laughs> and astronaut, I'm okay, thank you. And football, I, I've got two left feet. So um. <laughs> You're all incredible. You're very inspiring Ronan so over the next couple of days you're driving aren't you over the next are you driving you're not okay so you're just going to relax and enjoy I thought you might be in a car somewhere over the next uh, few days. sadly not one day is a bucket list thing maybe next year uh, but across the, the few days obviously we've got quite a few Q&A sessions um, well yeah exactly. also some uh, some sim battle racing going on uh, across at the the BTCC stand also mm. uh, those of you in the, the audience you can also try and set a lap time against uh, all four of us on our simulator here, see if you can beat the pros. Yeah, how amazing. Also, launching, aren't you, all of you, a competition. Tell us more about that. Yes, so, uh, Tom and I, we're going to be uh, giving you guys the opportunity to design our race helmets for the Silverstone rounds of the BCCC. So uh, that will be going live shortly, so keep your eyes across uh, all of the Bristol Spook and our channels. So uh, if, you've, if, you, if you like colouring in, if you've got a bit of, a bit of an artistic eye, uh, this is a good little competition to do. So you're gonna be, uh, as I say, designing our helmets, they'll actually be painted, and then we will be running those exact helmets at the How fabulous. Silverstone race And who is judge, are you judging? I think we are. Oh, yes, I think okay. we're going to get a chance to 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 get the best ones. Go, yeah. you know, you got you were able to do it at the Royal Holland Show, and it's amazing. You know, it's such a cool thing. The drivers' crash helmet is such a personal thing to you, and everyone has their own little yeah. story about your design of crash helmet. Uh, mine's always been red and yellow. It's a, it's something really? that you that you have from such a young age. Um, so, you know, for you guys to be able to, to design something that's going to come with us, hopefully on a race win as well, yeah. uh, it's going to be quite a cool little competition. And when is that? So that's now? So we're launching is, it. Is, is our... Right, great. Absolutely okay. right. And then uh, the Silverstone race uh, is in the middle of September. So it's uh, it's going to be yeah, not not long to get your ideas in. And how sure. do we enter? How do I enter? So you, oh, can go on the, so you can go on the Bristol Street Motors website and you can download the templates, okay? And anybody can do this. This is for... Anyone here, general public, top design studios, we're sending it to all the universities in the United Kingdom. So there's gonna be a lot of people trying to design our personalized yeah. helmets. And it's so cool as a driver, we get to pick which one we think is most appropriate for us or what we think is the coolest design. And we get to wear this throughout the whole race weekend at yeah. Silverstone. So you will see us on TV, on social media, wearing potentially your design. I, I and th we I get to keep the helmet at the end, it's brilliant. I think That's it should be an online vote for it. It would be much more fun. We could have a Boaty McBoat face decision. <laughs> <laughs> could be Let's some, do something that. interesting, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the season so far. I mean, we're halfway through, roughly, the yep, season. Yep. Uh, the two Toms, very good, dominated the entire test the other week at Donington. Just tell me a little bit about that. What sort of flavour is that adding for you guys at, at the minute? And how's it going for the second half? I mean, how do you how do you see it going? Yeah, I think. I mean, we we, we Toms. We, we had um, we've had quite a 
busy start to the mm. year. So uh, we have 10 race weekends in total. So we've just done, we've, like I said, we've done our first five, uh, but we've three races on the course at race day. So th it's busy. There's a lot yeah. going on. And uh, over the course of a, of, a, of a season, they come at you thick and fast. And especially this year, we've had one weekend off between each one, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you've got yeah. all the preparation that goes to it, all of the, you know, behind the scenes stuff, everything from the hospitality, you know, side of things getting set up to our own performance to the cars having to get, you know, completely stripped back. And in between races, you, you wouldn't even recognize that car. So the car at the end is is the, the car that I'm racing in this season. But Metal. between races, it goes down to an almost bare lump of metal. It's unrecognizable. Really? It gets completely stripped. Every single nut and bolt on the car goes completely through it to make sure it's in the best shape possible. Mm. So when you think that has to be done, the car will come back on a Monday, it has to get stripped down. There's not a lot of time at all for error. So it's really, it's been busy, for, like I say, for drivers, but for the mechanics, for all the engineers, for, for all the guys that work at the team. So it's been quite nice to slow down, have a couple of weeks off. We say a couple of weeks off, but there's still, yeah. of course, stuff to do. Like you said, we had our mid-season test at Donington Park, which went really, really well for us. Yeah. Um, so we're in good shape, ready for the second half of the year. And like I say, it was good to see, you know, Tom, Tom managed to, to top the times in the morning. I know, yeah. And I was in the afternoon. So as a, as a team, it's great. Pretty good, I'd say, wouldn't you? I How was love, it for you, Tom? I love ruffling some feathers. <laughs> and I'll you. tell you what, Napa Racing and those Fords, they thought they had it all, didn't they? Poor. Me and Tom <laughs> were both P1. In testing, he's I been think, throwing some shade. I, I see. Honestly, I the shade getting... that he's been throwing has been amazing. I mean, I think Ash Sutton might be taking a couple more espressos in the morning to try and get a bit more of an edge over us now. I think he might be shaking when well, he gets in the car. What do you think, Tom? Six points, isn't there? There's next to nothing in it at all. Yeah, so that's incredible. Yeah, really, really close. And and I think the the big thing <laughs> for this year is just kind of staying in the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said this 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 yesterday actually. So much of um so much of putting a campaign together is. It's not a case of when your good weekends are yeah. going really good. It's actually your bad weekends. It's actually trying to make sure that when you're having a bad day, they're not catastrophic. And that was one of the things that, you know, when, that, that sort of took me to the championship last year was that, you know, when they're going well and you're winning races, that's fantastic. Yeah. But on the days that it's not quite working out for you, they're the days that can kind of win or lose it. It's like any sport. It's like golf. If you if you <laughs> fight, you know, if you if you get a birdie, yeah, fantastic. It's but great. if you then get on a run, aren't you know, you? four bogeys after that, well actually that birdie's almost irrelevant. And it's so much about it is how you how you're managing your bad days, and I think that's the big thing. So as you say, six points is next to nothing in it. Mm. Um so it's absolutely on. It's still no, it's still it's definitely amazing. still going. Don't talk to me about golf. Oh really? And talking about running. I mean, I, I get to the point now in golf where you know, one minute, one hole, you can just play incredibly. And the next minute, oh, you awful. think, I'm going to run it down the stairway with a putter. How far can I hit a ball yeah. with a putter? I've managed 137 yards with a putter. And that was safer than pulling out a five iron because it can go the other oh, side I of the green that. in the pond. I go off the tee with an iron because I'm like, I can't get the driver out. That's I'll it, girl. Absolutely ruin it all. Irons are I safer. Have to say, if I could get the putter out on the tee, I would. I know and I'm a driver. Just push it along. I know so I'm a driver, but stairway. It's a very frustrating game. It is. And actually, I drivers. find it fascinating talking to you guys when I know golf so well and I know other sports so well because the risk, though, I just can't. I was just speaking to my son, who's six, one of my sons, 16 year old, and he's at school with a very. Uh, we were just talking about him. Yeah, up and coming uh, driver who I think we'll hear a lot. Jack Riddell. Jack Riddell? Did I say it? Jack Riddell, I think he's like, you know. And I, and he was just saying, he, he said, the, the, the stories he tells to Oscar uh, just about the risk and the nerves and the, I, I can't get my head around what you guys do. I mean, have you, Ronan, you're, you're, yeah, you're young. I mean, you're all young, but do you ever get in the car and go, oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> no, yeah, you're uh, nodding, but. Yeah, there's, there's probably been one most, memorable point yeah. in the season for me when I did that was the very first race of the year. Was it? A real baptism of fire coming into the BTCC for me and lining up on the grid. I was absolutely fine. Um, then we did our green flag lap. Then we came round to the grid mm. uh, to uh, take our grid slot. And yeah, my uh, my left clutch leg was completely shaken. I thought, I'm not going to be able to find this biting wow. point here, you know? Really? And Yeah, it really was. And I don't really show many nerves or, or emotion a lot of the time. Um, I'm always pretty level. Uh, when, especially when it's going well or when it's going bad. Um, and people always say, you're not nervous. And wow, that, that amazes yeah. me. But yeah, I must admit, around one, I was That's a little bit shaky. And Nick, what would you say to Ronan 
it, it, when he feels that, you know, if, if that happens again or, you know, I, I, how do you get over that, that fear, that, that nerve, that, those nerves? Yeah, I, I, I think because, you know, for the o- older of us, that, you know, when you've got kids as well, yeah, you, the, the, there is a, there is yeah. a factor of, you know, wh- wh- where is the line of risks you're prepared to, uh, to take on circuit? But I, I, I have done it. Uh, Although I didn't enter racing, I, I did bikes when I was a kid, not cars. Right. I've only done, raced for the last uh, nine, eight, nine years. But I think the, the adrenaline takes over. Yeah. You know, in, in the end, what, what, you know, the, well, you're on the grid. Uh, although Gosh. the first time I ever raced, I was, I think because of my bike racing, and it wasn't, it was only Ginettas, which is a lower class, uh, uh, still supporting touring cars at the time. I was on the grid, the race started, and I was so relaxed looking around going, wow, this is so amazing. Yeah. It actually started, and I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I was so like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> that is brilliant. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, I think you're all incredible, I have to say. It, it's, I, I, have, I have actually driven on this, on this track and I found it petrifying in every way, but I mean, I take my hat off to you. Let's ask all of you as we were, oh, no, 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 Tom, no. what? What car did you drive? Um, <laughs> it was, it's a few years ago. Was, I think it was an i8, i8. Yeah, nice, being double i8. Quite scary. Yeah, they're nice Very cars. scary, actually. Did you and, have and, any and moments? The, huh? Did you have any big moments? Not really. You weren't I, trying I'm not hard risk enough. taker, I'm the worst. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I just completely, like I said, I'm a, a safe sports girl, you know, I'm safe. Yeah. I'm not a risk taker. I, I just think, you're, I mean, I love cars, I love motor racing, I love what you guys do, but I, and, and I, I've, I have driven a couple of times on, on various circuits, and, and I'm always in that place of like, that whoever sat with me going, put your foot down, put your foot down. On the corner, I'm like, oh, it's so scary, but amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. So uh, as we round off, is there a particular car, I want to ask all of you, that you're looking forward to seeing go up that hill. Right, Tom, I, I what are you looking forward to seeing? I, mean, I think one of the things that's always fascinating about this place is, is seeing stuff that you wouldn't normally expect to be going up hills fast. Uh, Tom and I were walking around, uh, just taking in the sights and sounds and smells, really, weren't we? As he's <laughs> smelling exhaust pipes like a nutter. <laughs> um, Lovely. Uh, uh, there, was, there were a couple of the NASCARs that started up this morning, and you could feel it through your stomach. When they started up, you felt the ground the gust, shake. Yeah, you yeah. could feel the power in them. And seeing some of that stuff go past, I think it's always fascinating, especially when it's a little bit damp and there's a bit of rain in the air and stuff like that. That's the stuff that I like to see. Mm. But it's the noise for me. That's the thing that, you yeah. know, I remember going to Silverstone when I was six, seven years old and you, you stand at the end of the straight and the odd V10s or V12s were coming past the Formula 1 cars. It was almost piercing your eardrums. And some of the stuff that comes past. So the old Formula One stuff, I think, is always one that fascinates me as well. I think there's so many beautiful things uh, that you could just get lost just, just mm-hmm. stood watching everything yeah. come past all day, really. Yeah, brilliant. Ronan, what about you? What are you looking forward to seeing? Some of the more historical F1 cars and, and the noise they make. Uh, you feel the, the rumble through the ground when you see the other side of the hay bales when they're going up the hill. But for me, I actually love some of the static displays. Yeah. Uh, I actually had a little sneak peek at the, the actual car that won uh, the 100th Le Mans, the Ferrari. Um, still, as it finished the, the 24 hour race, uh, just in the summer. Things like that are really, really cool for me as a, still a motorsport fan to, to see and, and appreciate obviously the engineering that goes into every race car, whether it's our touring car or an LMP1 car, mm-hmm. definitely. Nick, what about you? Well, I, I used to live um, about five miles from Brands Hatch when I was a kid. And you could hear back then the, you know, the classic F1s, you, you could hear loud wow. even five miles away. So I'm looking forward to seeing a few of those go. But uh, for the, the other for me is the Beast of Turin, if you don't <laughs> know of it, which is a, a very, very old car. But it's, have you, have you seen, you know the one I'm talking about? You know, oh my God, you can search really? for it on YouTube. It's What it's is the huge. beast of Turin? It's huge, it's like 400 no. litres. It did, it was like 100 years old and it could still do 132 mile an hour. Oh, and wow. it's pure engine, it's just this massive, it looks like a tractor almost. Well, Google it, everyone's like, yeah, look up beast of Turin, it is going up. Beast of Turin. I actually think I know which one it is. The Be- really long engine on the front oh, of it, it's with just, all the it's fire huge. coming outside. It does, it looks like a fire engine. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I do know it actually, it's amazing. So long front. Yeah, huge, yeah. I, I can, yeah. I, I can it's, it's got room for, I think, two 
um, a driver and a passenger, but yeah. they sit right at the back. But it's also, it's, it's in unusually tall. It's about eight, oh, nine oh, foot right. tall. Yeah, just yeah. the one that's, it's, uh, the flames are spinning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's oh, no, it doesn't the, really the, have the, an the, exhaust. The, the, it's, yeah, it's, it's just the engine with stuff it's it's coming out of it. film, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. That, that will be, I don't know which day it goes up, but that will really be worth seeing. Great, Tom? I'm going to support my brother, Max, Yay. who got the fastest time up the hill of all time last year in the McMurtry electric car. Absolute spaceship. I'm excited to watch him go up the hill today yeah, and great. tomorrow and Sunday. He's not allowed to set a, a fastest time because it's so fast. <laughs> you know, if he gets it right, turn two is nearly flat at 150 miles an hour. So if it unsuctioned because it has two tons of downforce, it would go very quickly towards the main house. So, um, He's allowed to go fast this year, but um, he's got nothing to prove. They are the fastest, but I know it doesn't make the roar of like that NASCAR this morning. I mean, it was like far in the hole, kadoosh, as they started it, ground shook. You don't get that with an electric car, but it is like witchcraft. You've never seen anything like it when it comes around the corners so quickly. Incredible. And every time I see it, I go, I still cannot believe it's that fast. And my poor little brother sat in that. So I want to watch that uh, the most this Brilliant. afternoon. Wonderful. Guys, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you to our drivers. I think a little round of applause, please. Thank you. It's been great. I've really enjoyed talking to you. I had to ask thank about you. the risks and the fear factor. It's, you know, it's important. Um, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed listening and don't forget to subscribe as well. But enjoy and good luck glamping, Nick. <laughs> Are you excited? No. Yeah, you know, slumming it, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. you very much.